Understand that if you step in to help a friend, if they're in the wrong, you're in the wrong. Hi friends, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Cabo Rojo in Puerto Rico. Palm pepper spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. What you see here on the right side is these two cousins arguing. One's like 37 and one's 18 and they're having an argument over I don't know what. It's at a sports bar or something, so that's my guess. They're bickering and arguing at each other, and it's starting to get heated, and the one to the right you're gonna see here as we slow the action down to regular speed, hits his cousin in the face with a bottle, which makes his cousin's friend draw a gun, a cousin draw a gun. They start shooting at the guy a little bit. Now, as that happens, a guy comes from the left-hand side and shoots a guy who got shot, who got hit in the face with the bottle. If you go read the news story that I have linked in the description, both of those guys who are down right now paid with their lives in this one. Now you're going to see everybody gather around here. Uh, again, uh, what ends up happening here is I think actually the guy that took the fatal shots of the guy who got hit in the face with the bottle comes back on screen here. And if you go read the news stories that I've linked, they've actually charged that guy who came from the left side there with murder in the case of shooting that guy. Now we're gonna talk about whether or not that's justified, but recognize there's a lot of mess to go around in this one, so at least we get some lessons. That is serious, serious stuff. To talk about the legal aspects of self-defense and the moral aspects, we do something on the Extra Channel every single Friday on that. I'll put a link in the description. Please join us over there so that you can get trained as a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent self-defender. Lesson number one, be a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person and don't get into crazy arguments with your cousins over stuff. Don't get heated over sports and stuff like that. Guys, just let stuff go. Be a person who uses words. We use words and not violence to prove our point and to not be frustrated with each other. Now, what this guy does right here is completely indefensible. Literally hit his cousin in the face with a beer bottle. And that is deadly force. That has a high likelihood of landing that guy in the hospital, doing great bodily harm to him. Concussions, uh, definitely cut, you know, could hurt his eyes and, and, and affect his eyesight forever. Because you see that bottle broke and, and it's not like Hollywood, that's not easy. He hit him hard in the face with a beer bottle. That certainly is considered uh, you know, a, an aggravated assault. So what we go forward here and when his buddy draws a gun on him, I'm actually okay with that in this moment. The reason I'd be okay with it is he has shown the ability, the opportunity, and the manifested intent or put him at jeopardy of death or great bodily harm, which would justify the use of deadly force or certainly at least the threat of deadly force to make it stop. Now, of course, the guy doesn't have a beer bottle in his hand anymore. So what? Now, I will say this. The biggest thing that I noticed from this first guy, his big problem was, is that yes, he gets a gun out. And I'm, I actually think he's okay doing that. But then he drives in in order to threaten the guy and tell him, hey, you need to stop that or whatever. Don't ever do that. If you have a firearm and you use that firearm and you're defensively displaying that firearm, recognize that a firearm is a distance tool. It has a functionally infinite range in a defensive gunfight. So keep your distance because if he doesn't have a firearm, well then you have all the advantage until you put that firearm close enough for him to get his hands on it. And that's exactly what he did in this case is he is gonna end up <clears throat> driving in in order to get his hands on it. And you can see there that he tries. Now, right now, as I've frozen it, the guy, this gun right here fires. This guy fires at him. <clears throat> and I think he probably can justify that shot. I think it's gonna be difficult because you say, wait a minute, is the guy armed or whatever? Well, wait a minute, he just hit my friend in the face with a beer bottle, that's aggravated assault. I drew the gun, then he dived in on me to try to take my gun away. I think he could probably justify that. And I know that he shot it because you can actually see the brass fall if you watch very carefully. So, as the action goes forward and things get slow, now let's watch from a tactical perspective what happens here is our dude falls on his butt and then shoots again from this position. You can actually see that one show up on the, the camera. Some do, sometimes gunshots do show up on camera and sometimes they don't. It's purely a matter of the frame rate of the camera and when the shot broke and those kinds of things. But I'm not positive this was a purposeful shot. This might be an inner limb uh, sympathetic squeeze because he's trying to you know, get himself back up. It might've been purposeful. And again, all this happening at once, I wouldn't have a problem with it if it was. I will say when we don't mean to fire, this is why we don't put our finger on the trigger. This is why we keep our finger high and in register until we intend to fire. 
Now, <clears throat> our first guy who got hit in the face with a beer bottle sees all this happening is now advancing on the guy. I will say eventually you have to recognize now he can't get up and hurt you. He doesn't have in this moment the ability, so no opportunity to hurt you, no ability to hurt you. He does have manifest intent, but probably not an immediate deadly threat in this moment. And so you probably don't have to use a gun. Now, you might could maybe get away with it, but I don't want you to do that. It's not about can I shoot somebody? You have to ask the question, must I? Now, let's think about from the other side here. We've got two things. Number one, our original guy who shot twice is trying to restrain his buddy. I think that's morally the right choice to do. It's okay, man. Now's the time to stop. It's okay. He's down. Let's not do more than we had to. I actually think that guy is probably the most righteous of this entire group. The other guy, I get it. He's mad. He just got hit in the face with a, with a beer bottle, for gracious sakes. Probably he's got a concussion and all those things, which is why, hey, you want to stay out of these kinds of fights because you might end up in a struggle. Now, let's think about this other guy over here on the left. And, and I think that the big thing here is, is that in Puerto Rico, just like in a lot of places in the U.S., you actually have a presumption of reasonableness that it's your reasonable presumption that or your reasonable perception that really matters. And so you can have a mistake of fact and still be justified in what you did in Puerto Rico that if you said, hey, wait a minute, all I saw was this guy shooting my friend. Now that's what the news story says is it was this guy's friend. And the fact of the matter is if you say, oh, hey, wait a minute, I thought they were just killing my friend. And so then he gets after him based on the mistake that his friend was the aggressor, but he didn't know that, he probably will be okay. This is probably justified action, and it's what they call a mistake of fact. But if he did see his friend hit that guy in the face with a beer bottle, then he's probably guilty of murder here because his friend instigated and provoked the, the defensive use of force and if he knows that, then what he is doing is he is shooting a guy who's defended himself against somebody committing aggravated assault. So all that in mind means you better be very careful stepping into a third party encounter that you know exactly what happened, particularly in the case of uh, you know, use of deadly force. Because if you don't, you could end up in prison over something that was a reasonable mistake of fact. Now, he, that might all come out in court. He might end up justified, but like we've seen several times, you, will not, you may beat the charges, but you ain't gonna beat the ride. So use defensive deadly force only as a tool of last resort. Only when the, the uh, you know, effect of not using deadly force is so bad that you can't live with it because otherwise you're going to end up taking the ride like this guy is. Now, this second shot comes in the back of this guy who he ends up shooting. Now, we've said this many times on the channel. It's not about where you shoot someone. It's about why you shoot them. So again, perception matters. And, and I think here personally, this looks to me like, oh, okay, wait a minute, this guy's standing over my friend who he's just shot with a, you know, a gun and actively shooting at him. And so I had to shoot him in that case. And I think he's, if his defense attorneys are worth their salt, that's what they're going to argue. And, and I think that that's probably a decent argument, but I would like to recognize that depending on your jurisdiction, you're going to have a hard time with that. So again, only use defensive deadly force when you absolutely have to. Now he backs out of there. Okay, fine. Now what's going on from here? Number one, if you're standing in this case, you need your first aid skills uh, high. You need them to be ready to go. Don't know that anything could have been done in this instance, particularly with the guy who got shot right in the middle of the back. Man, those high center chest shots put people down really fast. Secondly, of course, practice spiritual fitness every day. I think if you practice spiritual fitness as well as emotional fitness, then you stay out of these kinds of fights to begin with. And that's the primary uh, goal here is to stay out of these kinds of fights. But then, God forbid, you might end up on your worst day losing. It happens. And, and you could end up losing in multiple ways, as we see here. And you want to make sure you've said everything you need to say to your loved ones, because you may not have another opportunity to do that. And you want to make sure that your relationship with Jesus is strong, because you will need it on that day and may not have time to get it on that day as you seek to cover your ASP.